Your sixth sense is just as important as all of the other ones. Your ability to hear, to see, to taste, to smell, to touch, to feel, they all play an important role in your life. They all give you incredible feedback and necessary information as you go about your day. But your sixth sense is no different. So when your sixth sense, when your intuition begins to quiet down, you might find yourself wondering, what the heck happened? Why is my intuition broken? So we are going to dive into that topic. And before we do, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Nicole Guillaume and I'm a psychic medium. My passion is teaching people to accept, embrace, and enhance their own psychic abilities. I believe that we're all psychic. And when we are able to fully embrace the side of ourselves, we are able to lead more fulfilling, and authentic lives. Now, if you're an intuitive person, and I'm pretty sure that you are, you may feel as if you are flying blind when your intuition shuts down, and you're not completely wrong on that. But you may also be wondering, why is my intuition broken? Is it ever going to work again? Well, let me assure you that your intuition is not broken. It's not something that breaks. The first thing to remember is that your intuition is a muscle. And just like the muscles in our body, our intuitive muscles sometimes need time to rest. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. So let's go ahead and use this idea about building a muscle. We're going to focus on the bicep, right? So imagine that you're a bodybuilder and your goal is to build up those biceps. So as you start working out and you're going through your whole routine, of course, you're going to do some bicep rolls and you're going to do some Well, I don't know what else people do to work their biceps. I just know of this exercise and you're probably going to do some push-ups. And when you are working that muscle out, what you're actually doing is you're injuring it little by little, right? You are creating tears in the fiber of that muscle. And when the tears are taking place, when you're using that muscle, that is actually not when your muscle is becoming stronger your muscles become stronger when you are at rest. So that means that when you're sleeping, when you are no longer working that muscle, that muscle is resting and it is repairing itself. And that is how that muscle becomes stronger. So there is a certain amount of muscle damage that is required in order to make your muscles bigger. Now, when it comes to our intuition, we're not exactly injuring it, but we might be using it to make bigger decisions than before. We might need it to learn how to communicate with the other side. And as we're doing that, we're making our goals and our intentions bigger and bigger for our intuition. And what can happen is that our intuition could potentially face a sort of burnout. It gets burned out just like we do. And when that happens, our intuition might need time to rest and recover, just like the bicep of that bodybuilder. So if you have been working diligently to improve your intuition, if you've been meditating, if you have been engaging in some type of spirit contact, whether that is connecting with your loved ones on the other side, working with your spirit guides, connecting to angel, praying to God and the ascended masters and whoever you believe in, if you've been doing that more and more and you've been working on making your intuition more powerful, you might just be in a state where your intuition needs to rest. So your intuition isn't broken, it's just gone dormant for a little bit. Now, I do want to stress one more thing because I know some of you are saying, well, I don't feel as if I've been using my intuition more than I have before. Like I'm meditating the same amount, I'm praying the same amount, or maybe you're not doing those things at all, and yet your intuition still shut down. So what's up with that? (laughs) Well, let's go back to this example of the bodybuilder. So let's say that the bodybuilder is at the gym, doing his reps, going through his workout, and he goes to do a sit up, and all of a sudden what happens? He feels this horrible ache in his back and maybe even his stomach, and he knows 
that he somehow injured himself more than what is comfortable for being a body lifter. So at that point, he has to rest. He has to rest his back. He has to rest his stomach. But what's fascinating is that because of the extent of the injury, he might not even be able to lift as much as he is, especially if that's if that injury requires some type of surgery or physical therapy. He may have to tone the exercises down. So with that, I would ask you, what crisis, what trauma, what significant event might you have faced recently? Because here's the thing, as we're moving through life, we go through days where things aren't perfect, right? We have good days, we have bad days, we have great days, and we have horrible days. And a horrible day is often a day where things aren't just going wrong, they are chaotic, they're out of control, our feelings are getting hurt, we're feeling overwhelmed, we may feel our emotions shutting down, we might have to take time away from everyone so we can have a good cry or we can get some aggression out on the punching bag, but whatever it is, there's some type of pain that took place. So I want you to think about that for a moment. If you've recently been through some type of experience that caused you great pain, think about the emotional response that you had to that. And think about all the energy that was required for you to process that pain, that trauma. And this type of pain, this type of trauma can come to us that quickly or it can be a very stressful situation that is being prolonged, that is lengthening out, that is taking place over the course of days, weeks, or even months. It could be that you lost your job. It could be that your home is going into foreclosure. It could be that you went through a tremendous breakup with someone that you thought was your soulmate and your twin flame. So that's devastating. And when that happens, our intuition may shut down because we require so much energy to simply process what we've been through and to give the right amount of attention to the pain that we're feeling, right? And so even though that bodybuilder didn't harm his bicep, he harmed all of his body, another side of the body that affected his bicep. And the same thing is true for you. If you've been emotionally injured and that emotional injury may have been a physical injury and may have been a health diagnosis that you weren't expecting. There's a thousand different things that can cause that pain, that trauma. So even though it wasn't an injury that took place because of your intuition, it's still an injury that affected your entire energy. And in order for you to be able to process and heal that trauma, your intuition is going to politely take a back seat. So your intuition isn't broken. It's actually doing exactly what it needs to do. And that is the second reason why your intuition may not be working right now. The third reason that your intuition might be acting a little wonky is because it's actually changed. It's actually changed direction. Your intuition has decided that it's gonna start working with you a little differently. So to illustrate how your intuition can evolve, let's stop to think about water. Water is this amazing substance. Water is a fantastic conduit to spirit. It's also a wonderfully incredible healing resource that helps us to keep our bodies very healthy. And when we think of water, we know that water doesn't exist in only one state, right? It exists actually in three different states. Now, if we take water and we put it in a freezer, what happens? Well, if the freezer is working appropriately and if it's set to the right temperature, that water is going to freeze. So now we've changed the way that this water functions. It went from being something very fluid, something that moved in a very fluid way to being something that is hard. 
but it's still water, right? Whether it's in a glass, whether it's in the ocean, whether it is coming up a steam, because that's another thing we can do, right? If we take water and we heat it up, it starts to evaporate into steam. It starts to become really a part of the air. So that's why water can actually be seen as being in three different disguises. It can turn itself into really kind of three different substances, although it's all water. Your intuition is the same way. So maybe you are used to your intuition being very fluid. Maybe you're used to information coming at you even when you're not really trying to focus in on one thing. Your intuition just has this really incredible way of speaking to you throughout the day. And as you continue to work with your intuition and as you continue to do your daily chores and you go to work and you listen to the radio as you're driving back home and whatever it is, slowly you notice that those intuitive insights you used to get aren't really coming up anymore. And those intuitive thoughts and those interesting emotions, they just, they're, they're, they kind of disappear. So what's up with that? Well, if you pay attention, you're probably going to notice that your intuition just changed its form. So for example, let's say that you're someone who's highly clairsentient and clairsentients are often referred to as empaths. They're not always empaths, but most of the time they are. So someone who's an empath has the very strong ability to feel and absorb the emotions of other people and um, even other spirits. You know, they can read the temperature and gauge the temperature and the energy of a room. And that's what clairsentience does. And that's what an empath does. So you may have the ability to feel things very fully. And when an emotion pops up in your heart chakra or somewhere in your body, boom, you instantly know what that emotion means. And you probably even have a sensation of where it's coming from and who it's attached to. But maybe one day that clairsentience starts to fade and all of a sudden you notice that you're getting interesting images in your head instead. You're getting visions, you're getting um, memories of different TV shows. And as you're going about your day, some type of scenario that took place on a TV show that you saw years ago that you're suddenly thinking about today, later on there's going to be something that happens that will coincide, that will be synchronistic with that TV show that you were just thinking about. And I know that seems like a weird example, but that's something that actually happens to me quite frequently. Like I'll think of a TV show that I haven't seen in years and I'll think of a very specific sketch that happened within that show. And hours later, someone will say something or do something that reminds me of that sketch that I was just thinking about. So it's like, well, that's a little funny. Especially, and it's especially hilarious when it doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything, right? There's no relevancy to it. It just kind of whoa, pops up. So that's another way that your intuition can start changing on you. Another way is going back to being clairsentient. Maybe you notice once again, you're not feeling things as deeply as you used to, but you start hearing different music in your mind, like different songs will start to pop up and you might start to think about a sad song and all of a sudden you turn on the radio and what's playing that sad song or you go into an elevator and what's playing that sad song or as the sad song starts playing in your head, you go to work and your favorite coworker comes up to you and she starts opening her heart to you and she tells you about some type of scenario she's going through and that scenario just happens to match that song that popped up in your head earlier that day. So your intuition is still working. It's just working differently. It has changed the way that it speaks to you. So. Those are really the three different reasons as to why you may feel as if your intuition is broken. So remember, it may feel that way because your intuition needs to rest. It either needs to rest because you are working on becoming more intuitive. So you are teaching your intuition different ways to communicate with the spirit world or different, or maybe you're learning a different divination tool. There's so many different practices that require our spiritual attention attention. So if you're pushing it or if you're really going after a big intuitive goal, it may just need time to rest. 
right? It just needs time to rest. It's a little burnt out. Second reason, like we mentioned, is because you went through something very traumatic. So your intuition isn't exactly resting. It's giving you the space that you need in order to heal and get better after being delivered that very traumatic and very painful blow. The third reason, of course, is that your intuition is evolving and that's amazing. And the truth is your intuition is probably always going to evolve. It's always going to start working with you in different ways. And once you feel as if you've got it down to a T, that's when your higher self and your own vibration and your angels and guides decide, hey, look, she finally nailed this course. She's got an A plus on this specific way of working with her intuition. Let's bump her up to the next level. And that's what they do. <laughs> so now your intuition is working with you in a different way. And now you get to experience with a new way of sensing and being in this world. So it's actually quite fabulous. But yes, it can be frustrating too. So just really pay attention to how your intuition might be speaking to you now. And if you are in that situation where your intuition isn't working with you because you are on a psychic burnout or you are going through something traumatic, remember you can still go to other intuitives and ask for guidance and ask them questions. And you can rely on the intuition of other people whom you trust to give you guidance. And here's the other thing. When you go to another intuitive and you ask for guidance and you ask for advice and you ask for them to tune into something, if they are saying something to you that doesn't sit right with you, that is your intuition still working. So see, your intuition isn't broken. It's still going to speak up when it needs to, but it might be reserving its energy for when it really needs to get your attention. So just know that your intuition is always with you. It doesn't break. It doesn't go away completely. It simply evolves and it rests. So it's really up to you to determine which of those two states it's in. Is it resting or is it evolving? And the way that you know is to simply pay attention to it and to be absolutely aware of your experience and to be absolutely aware of the experience that you're having in your own life. So if after watching this video, you would still like some guidance on how you can work with your own intuition and make it stronger, or maybe you're still not certain as to which state your intuition is, I do offer spiritual mentoring and that's something I would love to help you with. So for more information on that, be sure that you check out my website, guidingechoes.com. Click on the work with me button and it'll take you to my sales page and just look for the spiritual mentoring. You can set up your appointment there. Also, if you would like to dive into more videos on this topic of intuition, be sure that you check out these videos to the side and hopefully you'll find what you're looking for there. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I release new videos in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.